a spirit. Three o'clock in the morning, I, I was taking deep breaths and blowing out because it was like um, a part of me wanted to just come off of me. Just Jesus, just, just calm down. The Holy Ghost, calm down. But um, we accomplished some things yesterday in prayer, and I'm confident of that. Even uh, several of the pastors that I called out their names, two of them were very sick, and I did not know that. Um, one of them was rushed to the emergency room, and I did not know that. But by way of the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord reveals all things unto us, and He helps us to understand what it is He is doing. And so, with that being said, um, I would like to start out today talking about, and I know that we, are, we, 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 we have been dealing with um, managing the emotions and managing um, and understanding emotions. And why do we, um, why am I putting so much emphasis on this? For the very reason that on yesterday, you know, when I sat down um, for the last couple of days, I haven't felt my best. And so you have to, you have to understand that if God is calling you to do something, he's going to give you strength to do it. And you have to persevere and do it anyhow. Um, do it to the best of your ability. And um, yesterday, I can tell you, when I sat down yesterday, going to those realms in prayer was not on the agenda. It, it, it wasn't on the agenda. It wasn't almost on the agenda. As a matter of fact, when I, when I made it through the program, um, within those first 30 minutes, I was really thanking God that um, God got me through the program. And when I came off the program, it's like I just felt the surge of the Holy Ghost. And he just said, go back on right now because there is an emergency. And I, I heard him and I obeyed him. Um, and the results were phenomenal. If you know of anybody that need prayer, you need to lead them to that post. You need to share that post. If you're watching, uh, wherever you're watching for, you need to share that post with your family. You need to share it with your friends, people that you know that are going through moments of distress. You need to share it. And then we get up today and uh, see on, on Facebook where every public school that is now allowing uh, the children in any kind of way in elementary schools to introduce anything as it relates to Christianity, Satanism is now requesting that they have an opportunity to teach Satanism to the elementary schools and because of the Constitution, it would be fair game. But I don't know about you, but not over our children. No, if we have to start teaching our children in the kitchen of your own home, the enemy will not have access to the souls of those that God is raising up in this hour to, um, to push forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is why we are at an urgency. Um, I was reading in a scripture that uh, I would like to um, share with you today. I was reading in a scripture... Um, and it was in the book of, uh, I believe it was in the book of Genesis. Yes, it was. It was in the book of Genesis. And um, it was talking about um, God, I'm, I'm looking for it now, I just had it up here, um, about how the children of Israel, or how the people, period, back in the days of Noah, had turned themselves over to the works of the enemy. And the thing that I noticed in the scripture, um, that it said that because there was a uh, depravity of spirituality, of spirituality, because they were deprived of spirituality, they were deprived of one or someone being able to uh, blanket the earth at that time with the presence of the Lord. And that's why, you know, God just took me up like that. I can't even describe 
what I felt sitting in this seat. It, it, it was as if everybody that I prayed for, even some of you that are on this page, um, I was praying for you and I was literally being taken up into that place to feel exactly what you were feeling. Um, pains that was going through me. Every symptom that I called out, I felt the symptom first. And then I knew that that's what God wanted me to pray. And if I was an individual that did not know how to deal with or manage the emotions, putting the emotions where they belong, understanding the subconscious, understanding and being brought into understanding. I'm not perfect at it. Um, and I don't, I don't claim to be perfect at it. But what I do uh, claim to know is that I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning the art of the mind and I'm learning um, how to relate to everything that is going on so that I would understand how to operate in life. And that's what it's all about, people of God. It's all about knowing how to operate in life, how to use that spirituality to get you where God wants you to go. I want to read something to you here. I want you to see something. I went to this scripture and I want to read this to you. Um, um, it says in Luke the 24th chapter in the 44th through the 46th verse. It said, then he said to them, Jesus, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything which has been written about me in the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets and the Psalms must be Fulfill. Then he opened their minds to help them. Now that right there got me. He, God, opened their minds to help him. Now let me help them. Let me help you understand this. Do you not know that if God doesn't open a person's mind to know him, they will never know him? If God doesn't open the mind of your spirit, I'm not talking about just your intellectual faculties that have the ability to learn what you read. I'm not talking about that because the scripture speaks of people having eyes and see and still can't see. People having ears and still can't hear. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not impressed with what we're intellectually able to learn. The power of who you are right now is based upon what the Lord has permitted you to know about him. It is his revelation about himself. And this right here should put a charge under you today and, and, and not allow the enemy to keep playing with your salvation and keep playing with your walk with God. Why? Because there are people that are walking the earth like that man that I saw on Facebook who is absolutely convinced that he is to teach Satanism to children. And it's so matter of factish as if he's saying to somebody, go get me a cup of coffee. Why am I saying this? Because you will know today by what I'm saying that you have been chosen by God and that it's a gift from God. And, and, and everything in your life may not be exactly the way you want it to be, but the gift of God is that the Lord decided to open up your mind. And reveal who he is to you. And that is something right there. I'm telling you. The way this world is going. It's going down to the very little small things. That we used to take for granted about God. That God is getting ready to help us to understand. What a miracle it is. What an absolute miracle it is. To be able to say the name God. To be able to, to, to lift your hands up. And praise God. And have a belief system. That you are that you are praising the real and the true and the living God. That's a miracle all by itself. Before we get to the lame walking, before we get to the blinded eyes being opened, before we get to God healing from cancer and God healing from kidney disease and HIV, the miracle is that whoever is believing God today, whoever is trusting God today on this line, you are a miracle sitting right where you are. Even if your, your, your prayers have not been made manifest yet, 
because they have already been answered. And I don't even want to get into that. Your prayers have already been answered. You're waiting for the manifestation of what God is going to do and what he's going to show you that he has already done. Remember that from last week. But the miracle is, is that he revealed who he was to you. Even if you don't know him to the capacity that you desire to know him, the fact that your mouth is able to call on the name of Jesus, the fact that you're able to have a trust, and I'm not talking about in a higher power. I'm not talking about in rocks. I'm not talking about in bracelets and jewelry. I'm talking about the miracle is that you have not seen God, but yet you trust him, but yet you believe him to be in existence. And that is why the Lord favors you. And that is why the Lord is going to always help you. You don't know. You are a valuable commodity in the earth realm today. That's why you're valuable to God. And I don't even think many of us have, have really looked at it that way. As many people as it is on this earth that, 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 that ignore God, that, that don't even believe God, that, that, that have resorted to science. To, to try to um, intellectualize the power of God out of their lives. Who have sat and said that all the power is me. I'm, I'm it. There, there, there is no other uh, entity. But then I want to ask, how do you breathe? Do you breathe through you? Do you breathe through you? You may be able to do a lot of things with your mind. And, and people being able to move stuff across the table with your mind. But do you determine when you stop breathing? Well, who do you depend upon for your next breath? And that's the only question that they cannot answer for me. Out of all the questions that they can answer about evolution and where man came from and whether or not, you know, the book of Genesis is for real, whether or not the Garden of Eden was for real, whether or not Noah's Ark was for real, whether or not the Jordan River was really a Jordan River, whether or not the Red Sea was nine feet tall or nine inches tall, you can rationalize everything you want to out of that scripture. But until somebody can come to me and tell me, how does man take his next breath, I'm going to still believe in God. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The Bible said he holds the power of the breath of life in his hands. And so I'll, 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 I'll buy all those theories. Okay, whatever, whatever. The sky is not really the sky and the moon is not really the moon and the earth is not, really, but ain't nobody touching that breath thing. Ain't nobody touching that one. Oh, you could talk about how many universes is out there and how it, it's, it's, it's another world out there and how, you know, we don't we don't exist off of this world. And there's another world coming and, 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 and how the rainforest is drying up. And I mean, people can go through all these different changes, but the scientists will not touch the breath thing. They will not touch the breath thing because you can't create the breath. I don't care what kind of machine you got. Well, we got machines now that can make a heart come back to life. We got a machine that can make a heart beat again. Are you hearing this foolishness? But these are all of the things that you as a believer have to contend with in order to say you still believe in God. So don't ever let nobody tell you you a punk. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Christians are weak. Do not ever let anybody tell you that we are insignificant and because we can't function in life, we trust in a God that we don't see. No, we just want to breathe. How about that? We just want to be able to take another breath and still be in the favor of God to be left in the land of living. That's why we will never deny our God. That's why we will never deny him. My God, I feel the presence of the Lord. Are you hearing that? But the Bible said that it was God. Let me see what y'all said. That's right. That's right. You can't create breath. It was God. It was God himself that opened up their mind. And it says here, he opens up their minds to help them understand the scriptures, to help them understand the scriptures. And that's why prayer is so significant. I don't care. It is not a byproduct. Prayer is not a delicacy. It is not something that you do just when you need something. It is something that you do to live. It is something that you do to breathe. I, I, I'm scared of a Christian that never have a prayer moment during the course of a day. You terrify me. If you never have a moment where you stop and carve out the time to communicate with God, I don't care. I don't care if you have to go to your car 
for 10 minutes. I don't care if you have to spend five minutes in the bathroom stall. You got to start allowing your body and everything about you to become accustomed to talking to God and hearing from God. And you got to pick up that pace now. It's time for the believer to pick up that pace. It's time for the believer to, 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 to become a little more intentional about my prayer life. And we act like that's something that's just insignificant. You know, just, oh, well, you know, we're just going to pray. Yeah, well, you know, maybe we will and maybe we won't. But he said, he said, I open up their minds so that I can help them to understand the scripture. Because if you don't understand the scripture, somebody said, well, Dr. Bynum, I'm just looking for direction. The first, the first order of direction is being able to follow the scripture. If I can't follow the strip, the, the, this scripture to bring stability and correction to my life, then how am I going to have stability and, and, and direction for a business? How am I going to walk in that dream if I'm not accustomed to following orders? If I'm not accustomed to following directions? And that's why the scripture talks about um, all of it, all of it being joined together. Let's go to the book of Mark. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. The book of Mark. The book of Mark. And I'm going to uh, the 12th chapter. The 12th chapter. The 12th chapter in the 30th verse, it speaks of a total, the total alignment of man. Because we're talking about managing the emotions. And this is why your emotions have to come into play if you're going to be a whole person. A person that is ready to walk in vision. A person that is ready to walk in dreams. A person that is going to be successful in prayer. We don't hear people talk about that. We say, well, you know, be successful in my business. Be successful, you know, on oh, my job, you know, all of that. But, you know, for a few of us, we want to be successful in prayer. We want to we want to know that when I open up my mouth, God hears me. God hears me. And not only is he listening, but he's answering. I'm getting results. And I'm not getting results up the road, round the corner, 10 years from now. I'm getting immediate results. I'm getting immediate results. And I'm going to tell you why. Let me give you this little revelation that he showed me about, about Jesus. And I, and, and, and I wondered and I pondered and I said, Lord, why is it that um, every time you saw Jesus pray, everywhere you saw what the Bible said, and he prayed, and they, they brought him, they said, Master, we're out of, we're out of wine. Let me take a sip here. It's reality TV. Amen. I may have to take a bite of the sandwich too because my stomach has been kind of, so I ain't really been able to, so I may have to take a bite of this peanut butter and jelly sandwich in about five minutes, okay? But anyway, <laughs> um, why is it that every place where you see that Jesus prayed, um, there was never any delay? Have anybody ever thought about that? Y'all ever thought about that? I'll give you a minute. Think about that. Why is it every time Jesus prayed, every time he prayed, there was never a delay. And even if he wasn't praying, when the woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched the hem of his garment, she was instantly made whole. What's up with that? When Jairus came to Jesus and said that his daughter was dead and Jesus went in and said to Letha Kumi, rise. Why did she just get up? I want you to think about when, the, when he went into the temple and told the man, you heard me say that one, stretch out your arm. And the man stretched out his arm and he was immediately made whole. When he picked up the ear and put it back on, what, 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 what is this about Jesus that every time he prayed, there was instant results? And then what is it about us that when we pray, there's a wait? Mm -hmm. there's a wait. What about when he went to Lazarus' tomb and he said, Father, you hear me and I know you always hear me, but for the sake of those that don't believe, then I want you to do this. And he called Lazarus and Lazarus just came out. 
Have you ever thought about that? Well, I did one day, and I questioned the Lord about that. And I said, why is it that nothing, that if we are to be like Jesus, and if Jesus Christ lives on the inside of us, and he is now living his life, no longer I, but it is a Christ that lives within me, and I am living vicariously. Jesus is living vicariously through me. So I am now, when the, when, 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 when the devil looks at me, he doesn't see me, he sees Christ. Why is it that our results are delayed? And you know what God said to me? It, 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 was, it, it, it was so simple till it was scary. He said, because Jesus was the whole Bible. He was all the word. There was no missing scriptures. I just said something right there. There was no missing particles. Everything that the Father was made of and all the words of the Father was compiled into that one moving being. There was no scriptures missing. There was no abilities of God missing. There was no thoughts of God missing. So now do you understand why prayer and the scripture is necessary. Now do you understand why it is necessary for the mind to be awakened by God. Why the Lord must reveal to us himself. Why he is revealed to us. You just can't study time I'm going to know the Lord. He has to be revealed to you while you are studying the scripture. And that comes through prayer. Asking him to open up your mind. So that you can receive the revelation as a download. As to who he is. Because the more scripture that is revealed to you. You can read it. But the more scripture that the revelation of God is open to you. The more empowered you become. The more empowered you become. When you pray your prayers shift heaven and shut down hell. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The enemy does not move because we can make up good words. The enemy knows who has the authority and who doesn't. The enemy knows who is coming in the flavor and the fashion of the church and who is coming in the power of the word. Are you hearing me? And the enemy know who is able to quote a thousand scriptures, but he also knows the person that can make the 12 that they got work. Are you hearing me? Because they know how to make it work because the Lord has revealed it to them. And they did not run off with the scripture just to say, I know it and I can quote it and I know where it's found. They stayed there with their Bible. Some people have read scriptures for weeks on time. There has been times that I have studied the same scripture for over a month and still God won't let it go. Why? Because he has to make sure that I am not learning from my intellect, but he is downloading that thing when the word becomes the fibers of my very being. So when I open my mouth and I pray, even though I may not quote it they verbatim, what is coming out of me against the enemy is coming from an origin of the word of God that's been revealed to me. Are you hearing God today? Are you hearing God today? We don't just want to be Bible talking people. We want to be people that understand the revelation of what God is saying. Understand the mystery. Why? Because the enemy is cunning. Why? Because the enemy is doing nothing naked face. Are you hearing me? Everything that he's doing, there's another motive that's hid behind it. There's another something that's attached to it. And if you don't get the revelation of the word of God, you are quoting words. You are, you are making statements that are mere sentences. But when you open up your mouth, you are not cutting to the dividing of soul and spirit. You're not able to come against the enemy and cut down his works. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? My God, my God, my God. And that's why the managing of the emotions is necessary. And it's necessary that we have no dependency on just emotions. But the dependency has to be on the revelation that is stored in my subconscious. Because when it's stored in my subconscious and somebody like a Dr. Bynum sits on here and speaks a word and says that the Lord has given me to tell you that you're going to make it. The reason why you're able to be quickened back to life is because somewhere in you there's a revelation of the scripture and not just an intellect of some words that's on a page. Are you hearing me? 
Are you hearing me? That's why the Bible said that in the days of Noah, they conducted themselves like that because they were deprived of spirituality. And what does that mean? They were deprived of the ability to believe what had been spoken. Are you hearing that? They were deprived of, the, uh, of that ability to know the revelation of it. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. And that's why Adam and Eve came under such conviction. They came under conviction because they knew the revelation of who God is. And they walked against that revelation. He was revealed to them. How do I know that? Because when Adam went and hid himself and he started covering himself, God said, who told you to cover yourself? He said, because I heard you walking. What do you mean I heard you walking? How did you know it was me? Because he had a revelation already of who God was. And this is when the Lord puts his hand against us. This is when the Lord rebukes us. When he keeps revealing who he is to us. Time after time after time. And when it comes down to us trusting God, we fall by the wayside before some foolishness that the devil is showing us that we're responding to in our emotions when we are people that God has put his revelation on the inside of. That's when you ought to feel convicted. You ought to feel convicted that God took his time out to reveal to us in different times when he's answered prayer. Different times when he's made a way out of nowhere. Different times when he's worked out situations and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that had God not done that, nobody could have did it but God. You done seen God heal the sick. I've seen the Lord literally raise the dead. How do I get to this point and then let the devil talk some foolishness and show you some dumbness and you start shaking and fearing? I would not do it. I would not do it because my emotions were, listen, was not in the equation when I saw God resurrect my mother. My emotions was not in the equation when I saw God restore my father's leg. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing God today? My emotions was not a part of that creation. That was a part of the revelation and the will of God. That's why the Bible said, we're well, in it too that are touching and agreeing on anything that the will of God. It shall be done for you. No, he has revealed himself to you. You will not shake. You will not tremble. You will not be one that do not know how to walk in the alignment of the full body that God has created, putting all parts in their place. Putting all parts in their place. My physical has its place. My natural has its place. But none of that should take precedent over my spiritual. My spiritual should be the one that is governing how I move in the earth realm. Are you hearing this? That mind is that battlefield. That mind is that battlefield. And that's why everything the enemy brings to us, he brings it to your emotions first. Because that's where he wants to keep us. That's where he wants to keep you. Oh my God. And somebody said, well, you know, when you get in trouble, you go to God. But even when you go to God, there's a way you got to go to God. Even if your emotions is at hand, even if you feel in certain things. I told you, you got to put God in remembrance of what he said. Is, have God forgotten? No. He want to know, did you forget? Did you forget what he said? Did you forget? But there was a confidence that the believer have when they are in trouble. There was a certain hidden confidence. That we need to have. That we just got to say, I know God got me. I know it don't look like it right now. But I know the Bible said that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To those that are called according to his purpose. And that's where I got to set my mind. I got to set my mind on this. Because we will always be given choices. You will always be given a choice whether or not I'm going to have a breakdown or whether I'm going to get a breakthrough. You will always have a choice whether or not I'm going to believe a lie or whether I'm going to believe God. And I promise you that every time you choose to believe God, you are showing God that you have faith in him. How do I know I have faith in him? I have faith in him when I choose to trust him when something else is made available for me to believe. Oh my God. Faith is a choice. Faith is a choice. That's why the scripture said in Mark 12 and 30. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart 
and with all your soul. And the parenthesis of this scripture in the Amplified Bible, by soul, it said life. With all your mind, meaning your thought and understanding, and with all of your strength, this is the alignment of man. But did you notice the first alignment is the alignment that controls the emotion, and that's the heart. And that's why he said, it's got to be love. Oh my God. Oh my God. My faith cannot operate without love. That's what the scripture said. It cannot operate without love. Are you hearing me? Your faith need love. It cannot operate without love. So that if you don't, now watch this, I'm gonna give us a perfect example. You love your children. Those of you that got children, you got family members, you love them. Whatever the case may be. You got a husband or you got a wife and you listening today and you really love them. There are things that you would do for them because you love them. There are, there are, there are what, things that some of us said we would never do. I mean, how many times have we yelled at our relatives? I ain't going to give you another damn going out my face. I don't care if you do get set outside, but we'll do it anyhow because we love them. Are you hearing me? We'll make decisions and violate our own self because of the people that we love. I just said something right there. I just said so, and that's why I know that, my God, I just felt full right there. That's why I know that if your relationship with God is not a love thing, you can never walk in his faith. You can never walk in the faith of his word if you don't love him. And why do I say that? Because there will be times that you would have to operate in the love of faith. Because you don't have the feeling of faith. I just said something right there. There will be many times that you would have to operate in things. And you would have to do things. And you would have to move in the word. Because you love God. Not because you see anything. Not because you feel anything. But because I love him. I cannot not do this for God. Are you hearing me? That's a powerful thing right there. That's a powerful thing right there. And that's why people, you know, it answers a question of the lady that says, I read the Bible and I study the Bible, but it seems like my body just be going in another direction because you don't love him yet. Because when you love somebody, you want to be with him all the time. When you love somebody, it ain't nothing you won't do for them. And when you love somebody, you won't cheat on them. That's how I walk with God. I don't need nobody to watch me. I don't need nobody to, to just to live with me to watch how I live. So to make sure I don't do nothing wrong. I don't need nobody to be looking over my shoulder. That's why I tell my staff all the time. I leave my phone sitting around. I don't have no codes on my phone. I don't have no codes on my computer. And if I do, they got the code. Why? Because ain't nothing in my computer. Ain't nothing on my phone that I don't want nobody to see. Are you hearing me? Because I love the Lord. I don't cheat on him. Because I love him. I got faith for my salvation. I believe God for my walk. Are you hearing me? It is my love for God that keeps me persevering. And making sure that as much as I possibly can, that I walk circumspectly with this word. Because God, I don't want to let God down. I don't want to cheat on him. I don't want to go wandering off trying to love somebody and giving somebody else my heart. And watch this, at the same time, offending him. So when it's time for me to trust God, people, when it's time for me to just stand up against hard things and trust God, I'm able to trust him because I love him. I'm able to depend on him because I love him. I'm able to wait on him because I love him. Because if he don't do it, then he got something else planned. If God don't work it out, I know he working on something. Because my love for him says he would never leave me. He would never forsake me. He would never let me fall. The scripture says, I would not be made a shame if I put my trust in him. By God, I'm preaching to somebody today. I'm preaching to somebody today. You can't love him with your mind. You can't just love him like that. You can't love him with intellect. You got to first give him your heart. Because when my heart loved God, 
Are you hearing me? Then my soul would love God because my life is the first manifestation of what is in my heart. Good Lord, I just said something right there. My behavior testifies of what is in my heart. And that's why I got a problem with people that's been saved nine years, ten years, and you still going off and crazy and cussing and fornicating and all of that. Because no, what you are doing in your life, in your soul, is a sheer testimony of your heart. You don't love him. You don't love him. You don't love him. You like him. You're courting him. You're dating him. You're visiting him every now and then. And then you're letting him visit you only when you got a problem. But you don't love him. You don't love him to the point that I want to please him when ain't nothing wrong. You don't love him to the point that I want to talk to him when ain't nothing going wrong. I just want to be in his presence. You don't love him when everything you do down to a shopping cart. Down to somebody giving you 36 cents more in change than you should have. No, I'll take my car and drive all the way back and give it back because I love him. Because I love him. And I want him to know that he can depend on me. I want him to know that in this earth realm, he can trust me. I want him to know that somebody down here is trying to walk according to his word because there's somebody down here that's going to have to speak the word out into the spirit realm and rescue people out of sin. And I don't have time when people's lives are in trouble. When you got people on this line talking about, I want to commit suicide. If parts of me was fragmented all over the place and I did not live a life of righteousness and I wasn't pursuing God to walk in, 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 in right standing with him, then I have no authority to catch nobody's life. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? My God, my God, I hope you can hear the Holy Ghost. I hope you can hear God in me today. I hope you can hear it because some of your family members are in trouble and you're wondering why is my relative not saved? Can they spot your life? Why then? You got to be careful even in the good times, even in the good times. When it seemed like, oh no, we just family. We no, I done been to family gatherings too. I done been to family, family gather, gatherings this year. Where everybody's sitting around drinking and having a good time. But no, no. My answer is no. I have a responsibility. There's something that God wants me to do. There is something that God is calling on me to do. He's calling me to pray for my family. He's calling me to be able to snatch them when they're in trouble. He's calling me to be the person that they call my line when they want prayer, when they need a word from God. And I can't sit there and lay with them and act a fool with them and drink with them and get all drunk and letting them have to carry me to say, oh, we all just family and we just having a good time and you can't be that deep all the time. No, you don't have to be deep all the time, but you do have to be righteous all the time. Who am I preaching to today? Who am I preaching to today? We can't let the devil in no kind of way. We can't give him no crack. We can't give him no opportunity and no room, room to ruin my testimony, to stunt your growth, to render you powerless when you need to walk in power because he's an accuser. And those are the very things he would bring up. To mess with you mentally and mess with you emotionally when you try to pray for somebody. When there's an emergency on the line and God needs somebody to speak on his behalf and to speak that person's deliverance into the atmosphere. And what's happening with us? We're being tormented in the emotion. Why? Because we didn't manage the emotion. We didn't manage it. And now we can't want to manage it when we want it to get out of our way. We got to train it now to get out of our way. We got to tell it now, not today. We got to tell it now. I will not succumb to that. I will not allow you to make me manifest myself like that. You will not take precedent over me. And when you see that the enemy is taking precedent over you and the enemy is governing your actions, then I'm going to tell you something. You don't have enough revelation of the word in your subconscious. You don't have enough revelation of the word in your subconscious. And what is happening is the enemy is pulling up the truth that is sitting in your subconscious. So if sitting in your sub subconscious is they don't want to mess with me because if they mess with me the wrong way, I'm going there. Then that's what he's going to find a match with. Are you hearing me? 
Now I'm about to tell my age for real now. Because when I was little, we played a game called Old May Cards. And some of y'all out there know what Old May Cards is, so don't play. We played Old May Cards. An Old May Cards was they had two of everything. Two of a skillet of eggs and two of flowers and two of hats. And you put all the cards down and you turn the cards over. And when you turn the cards over, you keep winning as long as you got a match. And when you ain't got no match, it's the next person's turn. And that's how this thing works. The enemy finds the match that's in your subconscious. But if the enemy comes at you a certain way and the word of God is filled and the revelation of the word of God is filled in your subconscious, when there is no match, there is no response. When there is no match, there is no response. Because guess what? Scientists have proven what's in your subconscious is the real truth. And the reason why affirmations don't work for people is because you can say it all you want to. But the subconscious is only going to allow the body to respond to what is the truth that is sitting in it. So you can walk right time out and you know what? And, 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 the, and the Lord is my strength. But if that's not what's in your subconscious, if that's not what has been placed in there to the point. Wait a minute. How do I know that it's the truth? Because the medical book said that what is placed in the subconscious, you know that it is the truth of the nature of the person because that is their behavior. Did you hear me? Did you hear God? What is in my subconscious is my true behavior. And so when I am presented with a scriptural affirmation that says I am more than a conqueror. That says I shall not die but live to declare the works and the glory of the Lord. The reason why there is a manifestation of that. Because that is the truth. That is the truth that sits in my subconscious. And how do I know that? Because that's the way I live. I don't live with my life on the edge doing things like the book of James said that would bring me to a place where sin is now birthed and that which is birthed can lead to death. I'm not touching and doing stuff that would lead to my death. And so when you out of the will of God like that and you're not in prayer and you're not in revelation and you're not in the word and you're not asking God to open up your mind to revelation as you watch this. As you do things that you know is wrong and is not right, what you are doing is you are constantly exposing yourself to death. Are you hearing me? So if you're constantly exposing yourself to death, you cannot sit down and just read scriptures thinking that's going to bring you life when there is no subconscious agreement. And how do I know? That there is no subconscious agreement because I keep on doing it. But when I begin to respond and walk circumspectly and I begin to become conscious that when I hear my inner man say that's wrong, correct it. When I hear my inner man say you didn't say that right, fix it. When I hear my inner man say that ain't the way to do that, fix that. No, I fix it. I don't justify it. Because whatever I leave out there as an offense to God and as an offense to people, guess what? I open myself up to death. So now we're living schizophrenic lives as Christians. We are walking around, quoting scriptures over here, living the fashion of a lie as if we are alive, but really we're the walking dead. We're the walking dead. You're not alive to all of you is alive. You're not alive to everything about you agrees with God. You're not alive until you make a decision. Until you make a decision that I'm going all the way with God. And when you make that decision that you're going all the way with God and you get in prayer and you start asking God to reveal who he is to you and open up your mind so that you can now take in the scripture. That means from that point on, everything you read will work. Everything you read will work. Everything you speak will come to pass. Your prayers will not be hindered. Are you hearing the Lord today? Nothing about you will become stagnant. That which was held up according to the book of Ezekiel, there will be no more delays. 
There will be no more prophecies as the book of Ezekiel said, spoken and saying, this shall come to pass and that shall come to pass. And we have not yet seen it. For there shall be no more delays. And that which the Lord shall do. I'm, I'm prophesying right now. It shall be done suddenly. Because there is no hindrance. Because that which is supposed to come and bring you life is not fighting with the death that's in you. It's not fighting with the spirit of death that sits in your subconscious. It's not fighting to the lies that you have agreed to. That the enemy has set there. It's not fighting with the I can't help it. It's not fighting with oh Lord here I go again just help me Jesus. Because I'm going to tell you something about the power, the restraint of the mind and the emotions. Have you ever noticed something? Have you ever noticed that when we go to the doctor's office and the doctor says, and the sign says, no smoking. Have you ever noticed when you go visit people in jail? I have. And you get behind them doors and they start clanking. And you start walking seven and eight doors deep. I don't care if you do smoke. You're not going to light up no cigarette. And the whole time you in there talking to your family, if they say no smoking, you're not going to smoke. You're not going to do it. You know why you're not going to do it? Because your love for who you came to see is greater than your desire to violate a rule in order for you to do what you want to do. Because you choose not to smoke. Because I want to see, I, I want to be here to, to, to talk to Ray Ray. I want to, uh-uh, uh-uh, I, I, uh -uh, I, I came to see Junebug. So I ain't finna do nothing to break no laws up in here. Isn't it something that how we go to prison and visit people and we're the most manable people and the most respectful people. But then we get in other situations and you can't stop cussing. You get in other situations and every other word is a curse word. You get a, I just can't help it. Just pray for me. Every, every time you turn around, you light up a cigarette. But if you go to the doctor's office and they say no cursing and no smoking, you're going to sit in that doctor's office. You're going to be in that emergency room for nine hours, ten hours, and you're not going to smoke. Why? Why? Because you're respecting the authority that's trying to save your life. And when we put the same respect on God, that the word of God is an authority that is trying to save my life, I will rebuke myself. I will not go and buy nine carts of cigarettes and put them in the freezer so they can stay fresh talking about, I don't want to stop. You won't do that. God, I'm preaching to somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to today. It's making a decision. Because I gotta get my subconscious right. I gotta get the right level of revelation in my spirit. That's what it is. I gotta get it in my soul until my life begins to portray what is in me. I gotta stop talking about I'm a Christian and I flub up everything. You gotta stop. You got to stop wearing the label that I'm a Christian and you do none of what God says. If we love him, we will keep his commandments. If we love him, we will be doers of the word. And not just hearers only. Not just constantly going to church. Not killing pastors. Pastors having heart attacks and dying, trying to save a life that don't even want to be saved. No, we cannot be hearers only. It's time for you to walk in your own authority. It's time for you to walk in your own power. It's time for you to be able to rebuke the devil in your house. Rebuke the enemy off of your body. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? That's the reason why. You got the whole story of the sons of Issachar. Because they were able to discern the times. But that's the reason why. You got the whole story of the son that, that, that they're talking about. We know God. That's why them demons said, Jesus, we know. You don't have no subconscious of the word. You don't love God. You want to use his power like magic. And the devil ripped their clothes off of them. The sons of Sceva, who, who do y'all think y'all are? Because the only way that we recognize the authority is in you. We watch your behavior. We know that you're the sons of God because of your behavior. We know that you have the power of God because of your behavior. We know that we are afraid of you. And when you wake up in the morning, hell shakes. And the spirit of darkness is afraid of you. And demons have to plan constantly. Because you're already, you're always ahead of the game. Because this person's behavior.
behavior. God can depend on them because they have gotten their behavior to the point that if God taps them on the shoulder, they turn left and they turn right. They're not all over the place in their behavior. That's how we know. That's how we know that you are the righteous. That's how we know we re you really love God. My God, I got to go. I couldn't even go to a commercial today. I couldn't even go to a commercial today. I couldn't even go. God, we thank you. God, I 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 thank you. I don't know about y'all today. My God. My God. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Jesus. I gotta go. But I want y'all to know something. Jesus. called I'm being called to raise up an army I'm being called to get a people ready you know let me share something with you before I go off today and I know I'm I'm way out of time I'm way out of time but God revealed something to me yesterday and something that I had to do, something that I had to retract on. I was going to push the um, bring back the glory conference. I was going to push it back to April because I had been sick and I knew what it took to put on a conference and um, registration and all of that. And like I said, I had been sicker than people knew. And I was going to push the conference back to April. And God revealed something to me yesterday. Even while I was praying. That when you look at the attacks of the enemy from Louisiana, from the South. And how the enemy has stirred himself up in an awful way from the South. God revealed to me, he said, the South it has always been the foundation of the Bible Belt. It has always been the place where no matter what, people from the South believe God. No matter what, people from the South wasn't as quick to let go of their standards. People now that live in the South, they grandmothers and stuff, they, they all have a God conscious and they have a God nature. And if they don't respect nothing else, they respect God even if they're not living it. And so the enemy comes to disrupt the foundation of the strongest, valuable, believing people. I believe, I believe in the United States. And God began to deal with me about that. He said, why do you think it's down through Louisiana, Baton Rouge, all those places? Why do you think all this stuff is happening? Because He's trying to mess with the consciousness and the focus of the people that's got a root in God like no other people I know. But the devil is a liar. And yesterday I just said, God, what are you saying to me? He said, you have to do it anyway. Take the registration off. Those of you that are already registered, we're going to send you a book. But he said, take the registration off because I want you in that building. And I want you to pray. And I want you to raise up an army. And I want you to call the people together. Because without the spirit of God, we will make it. If we don't find that spot and mark the X in the ground. As this is the spot that God chose. I did not know. I did not know that three years ago. That when I walked the Ark of the Covenant there. And had a meeting there. And God told me to take the Ark of the Covenant there. I didn't know. 
When I got ready to leave, the truck broke down. They didn't have another truck. I said, I'll come back and get the Ark of the Covenant. I'll come back and get it in two weeks. Every time I got ready to go back, no trucks available. The Ark of the Covenant had been sitting in Lake Charles for three years. And God said to me, this was me. I established a place. And I solidified the ground. And I'm calling you as a prophet to bring back that glory. To put people in the presence of the Lord. No registration. But those that would hear what the Spirit of God is saying. The time is now. Sick or no sick. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I want to push it back, but I can't. And we moving forward. October the 12th through the 14th, we moving forward. October the 12th through the 14th of October, I got to do this. There's a sound that needs to come up out of the earth realm. There's a sound that needs to come up out of the earth realm. The Holy Ghost is ready. The heavenly host is ready. And he said, if you bring a people in that building and their focus is my ability rather than their problem, I will show them my glory. When I look at what the scripture said in Genesis about Noah, it said these people, they were void. They were deprived of spirituality. They were deprived of the presence of God. That's why God had to destroy and I'm asking God for mercy for all of our family members, for all of your family members, for all of the believers, for all of the pastors, for all of the people that are walking on one fence out of the fence and got one leg straddled still in the world. I'm asking for God to have mercy. And the only way that he's going to hear us is if my people, my people, y'all that's on this line, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then y'all will hear from heaven. And not until, and not until October the 12th through the 15th, he said no registration. I don't care. October the 12th through the 14th, we couldn't get that Saturday, but I don't care. I'm doing what God told me to do. October the 12th through the 14th, we are coming and we are crying out. And that first, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There must be a sound. There must be a shaking. There must be an earth shaking sound from a desperate people. There must be a cry. There must be a weight of glory. There must be a press in the spirit. Thank you, God. I'm not pressing for a car. We're not pressing for a house. We're not pressing just about jobs and money. We're pressing for our very existence. 